Hey guys, we are uh, continued coverage here from 2025 AHR in Orlando. Andy and I just got to the Alberts Hydronic Flow Control booth here with James. And James, your Flamco brand is on display. It looks really awesome. Cutaways, everybody knows I'm gonna be happy about that. You've got some neat stuff though that we're just honestly, Andy and I have been installing hydronic systems for, I don't know. I'm not gonna date myself, but for a very long time. Not long. Yep. And, uh, this is a product that you are bringing to the, our U.S. market, North America. We're not super familiar with. Can you tell us what it is and kind of how it works? Yes, yeah, so that's an air and dirt separator. It's going to work a little bit differently to what you're used to. So the benefit of something like this is we can do full flow through it for like for a commissioning type thing. So when you're in your initial startup, put all the flow rate through, get all the dirt, all the air out, and then once you're about to go away from the site, switch it to eco, 25% separation through the separator better for your pump efficiency, and it's just gonna work much better for you. So you're telling us that this will be installed on our piping system in place of any other air separation. It's gonna, this particular model, which I know you have a dirt separator separate if you want, but this will do dirt and air. Yes. But we're not pushing, we're gonna leave this in a commission system and we're not flowing all the water through it? Correct, so basically what you're gonna do, once you've got all the air and dirt out the system, once you go for that corrosion period, it should settle down. 25%, we're actually getting better performance than some of our models anyway, even from taking a lower proportion. And it's just, like I said, you wanna make sure you keep on top of it. And then maybe every six months to a year, you might wanna switch it to max mode for a little bit, flush everything out, and then back to eco. So this one has a magnet in it right there, Andy? Yep, magnetic on the bottom here, so we can spin the magnet out. Yeah, so one of the- drain. One of the upgrades from the previous model is we put a larger magnet in. That was one of the feedback that we got from the market. So anything that comes through there, all your magnetite that's causing all those problems with the pumps and the heat exchangers, down to four microns, go through there. It's going to be basically out straight on day one and keep on top of it moving forward. I got to look at this. Can I hold on to it? So this is all non-corrosive. There's some engineer, like some plastic in this too, right? Yes. Now, I'm not going to have to worry about that for like, it's totally capable of handling high temperatures. Same temperatures, same low pressures. Temperatures. Yep. Okay, and so I guess really if we look at this, Andy, did you notice the top of it? It's kind it's of modeled off of like, yeah. like a regular air, like this is a your flex vent uh, super. This is a very high efficiency, like high capacity air, air eliminator, but like that's kind of same setup yeah. there, right? Yep. What Same are you design. thinking when you see this? Like, what what are your thoughts? Because to me, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the fact that we're only going to send like 25% of the flow through right. this. Well, it's interesting when we were talking to James earlier that that 25% flow reduction, it, it's just a matter of turning it. So we can run 100% while we're doing startup, but you and I both know we don't have 100% of airflow or air issues 10 minutes after we do startup. Yeah, I'd like to see, like, I'd like to see the efficiency of the system and the components within an hour or so we should have pretty much yeah. like on a residential system we're not talking i'm not talking like multi-story things like that a residential system we right. should be able to get rid of the air in the system quickly so no coalescing media so that's really the the story here because what we see on the market and what we've seen like to date and what we've been drilled down to believe is that we have to run water through it, kind of like through one side out the other, and it has to hit this media in, or, mm -hmm. in order for us to capture that air. But you're right. saying that this chamber here is allowing like that flow velocity to kind of capture yeah. that air and send it up. So once it goes through the separation element right here, comes into this proportion, it's gonna hit basically a big bulk of water there, loses forward momentum velocity, it goes to almost zero. Dirt's gonna drop out just due to gravity. Air is gonna coalesce and settle up at the top. It's pretty simple design. The reason why we moved away from the coalescence, because we've done that in the past, is some of the issues with maintenance, it's not necessarily the product doesn't work, it's that when we don't maintain things, which tends to be the case, we run into issues. So no clogging risk with this, all the dirt's collecting separate from your initial flow there. We made it bi-directional, because on our previous model, if someone installed it backwards, it wasn't gonna you know, do the business. Right. So subtle improvements on the previous design there. So this could actually be turned on a horizontal yep. too, so like you can flow from either path. You're you saying can that's do a the bi-directional? 45, any, basically anything you can do there, it'll do the... Oh, we can start doing like 45s and stuff uh -huh. like that. Yeah, Some basically too, fit it in wherever you can. <laughs> All right, well, that's very, very interesting. I, you know, I, I understand like the float side of it. 
the magnet in here in here with the drain. I like that you put the the cap has a little wrench on it for the yep. drain. Um, all brass here, but then the plastic. What were you say? Yep, I was just gonna say, and you were mentioning also the insulation shells standard. Yes, that's pretty cool. Yep, I that's like the way that. Everything's going. So, like I said, insulation jacket comes a standard. We're trying to improve efficiency however we can, and this is the best way we see to do it. So let's let's not talk all about this. I think we could set this over here. Well, I'm not I'll sure. Hold on to that. Make right. sure we don't drop yeah. that. <laughs> Leave it to me, and I will break it. Uh, you've got just an air version of this. It's wrapped up in the insulation, but you get the picture. It's that, but without the dirt separation. Correct. And then you've got dirt separation. So two separate. This would maybe be. A, I'm guessing this is probably a little more efficient. Yeah. So when we're looking at where we want to locate an air separator, particularly on a heating system, you want to be after the boiler, the hottest part of the system on the suction side of the circulating pump. So that's gonna help draw as much air out as possible. When you're looking to remove dirt, what are you looking to protect? Boilers, Boiler, pumps, yep. Yep. Right. all that dirt's collected around the system, that's the last point it hits. So by putting it right there before the boiler, before it gets back around to the pump, best possible place to remove dirt. So that's best possible design. If we're looking for, you know, more, more cost efficient option, that's why we have the combined air and dirt. Okay, yep. okay. Right. So one versus two, but yeah. We're and kind it's, of still doing that, in, you know, in a lot of our installs anyway. I mean, it's so. The, I mean, the combination unit is handy when when the application fits. Um, Definitely lowers cost install. Yeah. That's interesting. I love the cutaway of the expansion tank, and so I've shown this in a couple of videos. I think this is really important for people working on any type of plumbing system, whether you've got thermal expansion or you've got, you know, for potable, mm -hmm. or you, uh, this is not a potable tank, by the way, this is for heating, but it, it shows what can, what is going on inside of a tank and the mm -hmm. difference. So our typical diaphragm tank, it looks the same on the outside, guys, but you've got just a rubber diaphragm separating, it's kind of sandwiched into the tank itself. Yep. And you've got, in this case, heating water on top of the diaphragm, you've got air on the other, and that's how we create that expansion vessel. Right. But what's really cool about your tank is you don't, you're not offering that in the US. You're just offering this bladder tank, which is not the same as a diaphragm tank. Right. Can you just give a quick rundown, really the benefits of this versus the traditional tank that we're seeing? Because you guys are marketing this at a very reasonable cost mm -hmm. uh, that's competitive with everybody else's on the market, every other diaphragm tank on the market. Yeah. Okay. So two things that we really did was, one, you mentioned the bladder. Why do we do that? It's the, the water quality in North America not the best, we're not conditioning it right, we're not using good air and dirt separation solutions. So when you have a diaphragm tank, the plain steel of the tank is exposed to that air that goes in there. So we see a lot of water quality issues with the pinholing of tanks, failure point. So by putting it in a bladder, you separate that corrosive water of the system from the steel shell. So that's one thing. One of the other things we're doing is we're using nitrogen uh, for the gas charge. So most people just use straight air. Nitrogen is a larger gas molecule, and you might have seen they use them in race car tires because basically it lasts longer. Okay. So we know that these things, we're supposed to check them once per year. It's not getting done, but if we use nitrogen, it, it gives a bit more longevity to the performance of the tank. Are you Perfect. checking air on tanks on services? Yeah, yeah, it's annually. important. It, it is. You got to have an isolation valve to get it uh, and disconnected yep. from the system, though. It's the only way you can do it. Yep. This one's going to leak really bad because it's got this big hole on the side. <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't install this one, but yeah. yeah. Don't install this one. No, the cutaways are awesome. Honestly, I think that's just the way my mind works. Yeah. I understood this. Just, I had to be shown what's under the box, you know, what's behind the curtain, what's under inside the box. Like, this is how it makes sense to me. I love showing this. I love that you guys are showing it. I think it helps everybody watching. What do you think of like expansion tank brackets on systems? Again, it's it's kind of like we were talking with air, air separate air and dirt. You know, I mean, every t every tank we install, it's got to get mounted one way or another. We, yeah. You know, my inspectors anymore, they don't allow me to hang it off a of piping. Mm -hmm. Doesn't. That's not F. So it's going to get a bracket like the like the Flamco bracket, you know, or some other version of a wall bracket. Yep. And you know, this setup here is is pretty cool because it's kind of all in a in a one kit. Yeah. You know. So it, it makes it a really quick install. Yeah, you guys have some nice display here, just showing the modulation, like their modular kind of packaging. Mm -hmm. You can add your backflow and your fill valve here, uh, right to this this um, bracket, the expansion tank bracket. Sorry, what is this called again? This is 
This is the uh, boiler pack. So the boiler pack, yeah. The way we configured it here, like you can configure it in lots of different arrangements. Like this is just showing one way I would do it. So we would isolate here the autofill valve if we're trying to maintain the tank, isolate the system. We could drain down the back here, get all the water off of the gas charge, gives you a true reading on that gas charge, top it up once per year. It makes it very, very easy. But you can do all sorts of stuff, run the water up the wall, whatever you want to do, what flexible as you want. That's pretty cool. Yep. It's really efficient, just the right. how compact it is like that. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, we've, we've really started to take the, you know, the efficiency of the install back into, you know, we don't have to decide where we're going to put things. You know, when you have a, a this, you know, bracket like this, we know that the water, the expansion tank's going to go here. Okay, that's done. We don't have to figure that out anymore. We just got to bolt that thing on the wall and kind of, kind of wherever it fits, because yep. from here to our system is what it, that's our biggest challenge. Then we could, we can. Yeah. This, this makes it so much easier to locate wherever it just fits. To be honest with you, yeah, especially whatever. when you're working real tight spaces. One thing I forgot to mention is uh, the, this boiler pack also comes with an option of just an extreme air or actually the combination as well. So okay. everything you need for that boiler hook up, we often see these packs coming with air separation. So we package that into the thing as well. So everything you need for that boiler startup, and you're you, going to have. So you can order it as a package deal or you can order individual. Correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. And these are three quarter through two inch? Yes. For okay. the air and dirt? So on the boiler pack, we're only doing, I think it's uh, three quarter up to one and a quarter inch. Sure. Uh, but these themselves, three quarter inch through two inch. Okay. Very cool. And Flamco promises not to send you any of them with giant holes in the side. Those are just really cool displays. <laughs> <laughs> no, James, I appreciate it. This is yep. really cool. Andy, you got anything else to add? I don't to think it? so. Yeah, it's, it's fun to see it on display and just in in theory, I'd love to be able to walk it and pipe up a system just like this. Like yep. this would be nice, right? Right. If only we had the the space. Right. The yeah. layout. Maybe some slat board to put our boilers on. Yeah, we need slat. Yeah. Sweet. This is a <laughs> <laughs> guys, check out the Mechanical Hub YouTube channel. We're broadcasting videos all month long about these uh our time here andy and i having a lot of fun with james goofing off <laughs> i hope i hope you didn't mind <laughs> no we're, we're sharing information from ahr and it's been a lot of fun thanks for watching guys have a good day mm -hmm.